Hi, my name is David Hester. I've been a member of the studio for a while and welcome back. This is part two of a series that I'm calling the Alt-P-Brach approach number one to interpreting the earliest primary source manuscripts. As I mentioned, I've been very interested in uncovering and understanding and comparing and contrasting and learning from and extracting out of these earliest materials that we have of P. Brock so that I as a musician become a better and more informed performer regardless of the style that I choose. I personally am attempting to create an individual style that respects the Gaelic song tradition behind the scores and tunes that we play today. You needn't do my style, but what I'm hoping is that the approach that I'm offering you, which is comprised of five rules, will give you a way to dig deeper, understand more thoroughly, and bring out the greater musicality of the songs that are behind the tunes. Now, not going to go into the history lesson, not going to go into the theoretical underpinnings of this. Be that as it may, you can read um, Alan McDonald's thesis. It's on the altpbrach.club website in the Learning Living Pbrach um, domain. Uh, Ian McInnes also, his thesis is <clears throat> available to you as well. Effectively, what I am presuming is that a cultural tradition, a cultural musical tradition, immersed and surrounded piping. And that cultural musical tradition was undermined thoroughly in the mid to late 18th century. And although pockets of it continued to exist, um, the, the greater whole was lost. And with it, a mooring for the Pibrach player. It was precisely for this reason, in fact, that the Highland Societies of London and Scotland sponsored people to go out and write down a notation of some sort. They preferred staff, but Colin Campbell developed Kantorach, the Leatherlorn um, notational system, because they were afraid it was going to be lost. An oral culture had lost its base and foundation, and only literature could come in and record things before memory disappeared as a generation passed on. So, with that in mind, and with the kinds of efforts that um, have been exerted by the Alt Pibrach Club in conjunction to some degree with the Pibrach Society, who's been very favorable for us, um, I've worked out an approach. It's not the only approach. Barnaby Brown's working out his own approach. Maybe Peter Cook will develop one, and Alan McDonald certainly has his approach. But I wanted to be, provide simple, concrete rules that anybody could use to help bring the music out from behind the scores and use that information, use that insight to play on the boards to play in front of other people to expand the opportunities and interpretive options available to you as a performer of Pibrach. So, what are these five rules? They're as follows. One, primary sources are required. You must get back to the primary sources. Two, genres are alive and well. There is no one genre called Pibrach. Pibrach is a class of music underneath which several genres exist. Three, when first encountering a score, cadences are optional. Four, when encountering a score, you must understand what krahenen are. Five, Bring back Urlar refrains to create a framework within which the motions and cycles of the variations are allowed to 
be performed. And those are the five rules, and on the next series of videos, I will elaborate on each of them a little bit so that you come to understand them more clearly and so that you know there's some nuances to them, but some thought behind them as well. Okay, see you in the next video.